Hi, everybody. Welcome to the Lexus Virtual Classroom. My name is Melissa O'Connell, and I am all the way back in the third row on the gigantic new Lexus TX. I am so excited to bring this deep dive tutorial series for you on our newest Lexus model. The Lexus TX is a true third row Lexus with cargo area in the back. What? I'm so excited. There are three different powertrains for the TX the all gas TX350, the hybrid TX500H F Sport Performance Model, and the TX550H Plus. That's the plug-in hybrid electric version of the TX. In this video, I'm going to cover as many features as I possibly can. Some features are available or standard equipment on all of the different TX models, other features are only available on certain builds. So if you're still shopping for a TX, make sure that you double check the vehicle specifications list so that you know that you're selecting the model that you prefer. We're going to do this deep dive in two parts, so make sure to check them both out. Don't forget to use the timestamped index in the description below this video and most of our other long format videos. That lets you just jump through to different subjects if you prefer. And if you're watching on mobile, look for the word more somewhere below the video title. That will open the video description and you can scroll through the images of the chapters. Click view all if you'd like to see the chapters in list view. You can also see the full timestamped index in the mobile format by clicking on more from above. In part one, we're going to start out by setting up your Lexus driver profile. This vehicle of course has the new Lexus interface multimedia system. And it's really important to set up your Lexus driver, primary driver profile before you start customizing anything because there are a lot of different customizable features that are attached to your Lexus driver profile. Make sure to check out part two because that's where I will talk about all things Lexus interface and some of our more advanced safety and convenience features like advanced park, and the 360 camera monitoring system. In fact, we'll look at the entire center console and all of the features that are covered here. Let's go ahead and set up our Lexus driver profile. Make sure to note that the first profile that is added to a vehicle with Lexus interface will be the primary driver profile. So if you're not the primary driver, then make sure to add the primary driver profiles Lexus app to the vehicle first. When you first get in a vehicle with Lexus interface, you are probably going to see this welcome screen. Select your language from the list available on screen. And then it's going to tell you that you need to activate connected features with the Lexus app. You can scan the QR code to download the Lexus app or just download the app from the App Store on iPhones or the Play Store on Android phones. Open the Lexus app on your phone. Go ahead and choose Keep Me Signed In. If you have a Lexus account or a Toyota account, go ahead and choose Sign In. If you've never had a Lexus or Toyota driver account before, choose register and then continue to registration. Rather than signing in with social media platforms, go ahead and create your new account from scratch. You'll enter your name, mobile number, email address, and create a password. This is the most efficient way to sign in and make sure that you can receive the necessary authorization codes. It's always a great idea to make sure that you get an authorization code for your email address and for your mobile number. What you see next on your Lexus app screen will vary depending on whether or not you already have a vehicle in your Lexus app garage. If you don't have a vehicle in your Lexus app garage, you're going to select add vehicle. If you already have a Lexus vehicle in your app and you would like to remove it, click right on the vehicle image and then you'll see remove vehicle at the bottom of the screen. If you have a vehicle in your Lexus app and you're adding an additional vehicle, on this version of the Lexus app, you'll select the drop down arrow and then you'll just click on the plus on the top right hand corner. 
you'll choose scan VIN, and you can scan the VIN from the vehicle identification information inside the driver's door on the window sticker, or you can also choose to enter the VIN manually. Then choose add vehicle. You're going to see a prompt that tells you to scan the QR code or connect by code. Do the next steps on your vehicle's main screen. Click continue. So we can see that we have a code on the vehicle screen. So we are going to connect by code. This means we need to type in the numbers that we see on the vehicle screen onto the phone screen. The code does expire. So just make sure to enter that code when prompted. The vehicle is ready and waiting for us to finish the setup in the app. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll click Save Changes, and now we're able to register our connected services trials. You can look at each item that's compatible with your vehicle, and then click Continue. And now we need to accept the terms for the master data consent. That's going to allow the connected services to operate, which would include your Safety Connect, which is the SOS button, your service connect, tracking the health history of the vehicle, and of course your Lexus navigation, which is a cloud-based subscription navigation service. And since all TX models come with the 14-inch display that includes a three-year trial of the Drive Connect Lexus navigation system. If you scroll down, you'll see the information to set up and connect Wi-Fi. That's the hotspot on the vehicle. If you choose to use the hotspot on the vehicle, you do need to set up Wi-Fi. That's going to be a separate account with AT&T. You do also have a small trial of three gigs of data or 30 days, whichever comes first. It is not required for you to activate the hotspot. So if you don't have passengers that are going to be using your vehicle's hotspot to operate their devices, you can just click maybe later and then confirm. Check to see if there are any other items to accept. And if not, click confirm and continue. Congratulations, let's finish setup. If you have multiple vehicles on your Lexus app, note that your previous vehicle is still going to show. If you'd like to see the new vehicle that you just added or additional vehicles in your app garage, click on the drop down arrow to see all vehicles in your app. So here's our new TX that we just added and I can choose to make it my default vehicle for the Lexus app and then choose select. So now it's going to switch my view from my previous vehicle to my new vehicle. I still have them both there. I can always click the drop down menu and rotate from vehicle to vehicle. Just touch to go back. Now we finish the app setup on the phone. Let's finish setting up the vehicle. We'll click app setup finished. We have a welcome message on screen and we're asked, would you like to pair for Bluetooth? Yes. Now that means I need to open Bluetooth on my phone. So locate the Bluetooth menu in the settings for your smartphone. For Android phones, you'll go to connections or connected devices and locate your Bluetooth settings menu. Then follow the steps to pair your phone for Bluetooth and Android Auto. You can click search for devices if your phone doesn't appear right away. And then you can choose your phone from the vehicle screen or the vehicle from the phone screen. Now we're going to click on things on the phone and the car, everything in the affirmative. Pair on the phone, okay on the car, allow for favorites and call history. And we'll just wait for prompts. Yes, we want to connect for Apple CarPlay. We are going to need to get Apple CarPlay permissions to come up on the phone as well. Use CarPlay. And we have one more CarPlay prompt, allow. When you allow for the apps to mirror from the phone to the vehicle screen, then your CarPlay is all set up. Android phones will set up in a similar way. 
Now that we have our primary Lexus driver profile added to the vehicle, we can do some additional customizations that are really important to do right away. If your phone is connected for Apple CarPlay, notice that you're able to see your entire Apple CarPlay menu as well as the stacked Lexus interface menu on the left-hand side. If you are using an Android phone, come to your apps, select Lexus, and then you'll be able to see the Lexus interface menu bar. Let's choose the settings gear. We're just confirming we've got our current driver, also the primary driver. So we want to make sure that primary driver is the correct person. Personal info. If your TX has the driver attention monitor, you'll see it here at the top of the steering column. The monitor works whether you have Face ID set up or not. Face ID is most helpful when you have multiple profiles saved to the vehicle. But if you would like to set up Face ID, go ahead and set up your driving position memory first because we need to have your face visible to the driver attention monitor and we want you to be comfortably in a safe driving position. So let's go ahead and adjust the seat. You can bring the seat forward, back, lower the hip point, raise the hip point, lower the front of the seat cushion, raise the front of the seat cushion, and on some models, you'll even be able to extend the front of the cushion, just giving you additional support for your legs, depending on how tall you are. You can also recline or bring the seat back forward, and you can adjust the lumbar support. So when you're adjusting the lumbar, I'm not sure if you're able to see this, but you can actually raise and lower where that air bladder is going to fill just to give you more support where you need it for your lower and middle back. Keep in mind that the lumbar support is not saved as part of the driver position memory setting. The steering wheel on the TX with driver position memory is a power tilt and telescopic steering wheel. That means you can move it away, bring it toward you, lower it, or raise it until it's in the correct position for you. Then set up your side view mirror position. You'll select L for left and R for right and use the touchpad to make your adjustments. If you have a head up display, you can take the time to adjust that now or you can adjust it later and resave. Once you have everything set for your driving position, we're going to push set, let it go, and your driving position number, button one, two, or three. And an important tip, if you have multiple driver profiles on the vehicle and you're changing from one driver to another, if you lock the car in between switching, it will recognize the next driver profile. But if it does not automatically move the seat for you, make sure to press your driver position memory button. We'll have more tips about adding additional drivers in part two of the tutorial series. Now we can set up our face ID. Click set up face, accept to accept the terms, and then you'll click begin and look straight ahead. If you have trouble getting the monitor to see your face, make sure that you are sitting up and that your seat is adjusted properly. If you need to remove the linked face ID, it sounds a little weird, but you'll click remove face and then that will take out the face ID that's been registered. Remember that face ID does help the vehicle to connect to your driver profile. So it's great if you have it, might as well use it. The other item that's really important to set up is linking your key. Make sure that you have your selected key in the vehicle and all other smart keys outside of the vehicle. Just click on the toggle to link key. It will turn blue. If you do have multiple keys in the vehicle, you'll receive a message telling you that there are multiple keys in the vehicle and you need to remove those keys. This will allow your vehicle to very quickly and easily recognize your driver profile when you are unlocking the vehicle, especially from the driver's door. So just keep that in mind. Another important item to set up is your Lexus security pin. It's a six digit pin that periodically will pop up 
on the vehicle screen. If you've never had a pin associated with your Lexus app, the app setup process is going to ask you to create a pin. But if you're not prompted to make a pin, that means your Lexus driver profile has actually had a pin set up in the past. You can change that at any time. Go ahead and click on the profile icon on the top right corner of your app screen. Then select account and open security settings. Once you're in security settings, you'll be able to select set or reset pin. The app is going to ask you to sign back in to verify your identity. Just choose confirm and follow the sign in process. If you've allowed Face ID to sign you in, you'll be signed in automatically. If not, enter your email and password for your Lexus account. Then choose your new PIN. It can be a very simple PIN, and if it is, you're going to get a warning letting you know that you have a weak PIN, it's easy to guess, and you might want to change it. That's completely up to you. You will be asked to confirm the PIN, so just enter it a second time to make sure that it's been entered correctly. So I'm making a very simple PIN, just so you all can see this as an example. Make sure to set or reset that PIN during your Lexus app setup process, because after your app or the vehicle has software updates, or if you've exited to guest mode, which is a great thing to do if you're valet parking, by the way, you'll need to know that six digit PIN in order to be able to reconnect your driver profile to the vehicle. Just select the driver profile that you would like. You'll get the PIN prompt on screen and then enter your six digit PIN. My super easy PIN for demonstration purposes only. And then click submit. It's going to check the PIN, tell me success, welcome me back to the vehicle and you can see my sweet little kitty cat. And of course you can customize that profile picture in your Lexus app. Now that we have the important Lexus driver profile details all set up, let's explore the rest of the vehicle. Taking a look at the exterior of the vehicle, the new TX has a brand new front grille design. There's not a large front logo on the TX. It's actually been moved up to the hood line and the radar that used to be integrated into or behind the front logo has been moved up and out of the grill. You'll see two different layouts for the optional intuitive park assist system. The first option will give you four sonar parking sensors located across the front and four across the rear. If your vehicle also includes the advanced park feature, you'll have four more sensors, two on the front corners and two on the rear. So you'll have six parking sensors across the front and six across the rear. We'll take a look at how to use the advanced park system in part two of our deep dive tutorial series. If you don't see the round sonar sensors on the front and rear of the vehicle, then it's not equipped with the parking assist feature. If your TX is equipped with headlamp washers, you're going to see a cutout below each headlamp. Your headlamp washers are linked to the operation of your front windshield washer. Check out how this works. The headlights need to be on, either manually turned on or turned on automatically when set to the auto mode. Pull and hold and you'll spray the front windshield and your headlamp washers will operate. They'll also operate with every fifth pull of the headlamp washer stock after they've initially operated. Four, five. The fuel door is located on the driver's side of the vehicle. Locate the button to open it just inside the vehicle, to the left of the steering wheel, and below the air conditioning vent. There's even a handy spot to hold the cap while you're filling up. After you secure the cap in place, make sure to close the fuel door until you hear a click so you know it's closed and locked. The charging port door for the plug-in hybrid TX550H Plus is on the opposite side from the fuel door. It doesn't have a button to open it. Just make sure the vehicle is unlocked and then press to pop the door open. 
The TX plug-in hybrid is compatible with level one and level two charging. A wheel lock kit is also available. If you see a lug nut with a wave pattern, that's your wheel lock. The key is located in the cargo area with the other tools. You'll notice that the door handles on the TX are the digital latch style of door handle. That means the door handles are fixed in place. They're not going to pull open. When you place your hand in the door handle and it unlocks, then you'll just squeeze that touch pad and the door will be able to open. There is also a manual override lever just below the front edge of the door handle. When you're exiting a vehicle with digital latch, you don't actually need to pull on the door handle. You push. Just push with your thumb and keep pushing to open the door. If the vehicle has somehow lost power and digital latch is not functioning, you do have a manual or mechanical override. You'll pull the latch two times toward you. But for normal day-to-day -day driving, place your thumb on the indentation, push the latch, and continue to push the door open. Digital latch makes it possible to have a safety feature called Safe Exit Assist. Using the new digital latch and the blind spot monitor sensors, the new Safe Exit Assist helps to look for passing vehicles and bicyclists before allowing a door to open. It was a very subtle beep, just yeah. a beep beep, and if you saw the indicator, it illuminated. You may also hear a message Watch for traffic. that says, Watch for traffic. There are different alerts depending on whether the vehicle is still on or traffic. if it's been turned off. Once you turn the car off, the system is active for three minutes. Taking a look at the key fob, when you press the lock button one time, you'll lock the entire vehicle. And at night, if you press the lock button two times, You'll lock the vehicle and turn off the headlights as long as the headlights are in auto mode. Press the unlock button one time. You'll unlock the driver's door only. Press a second time and you'll unlock the entire vehicle. You can also lock and unlock the vehicle in the Lexus app. You can also use the lock button to remote start the vehicle. You do need to be about 30 feet from the vehicle with a clear line of sight. You're going to press, press, press and hold. Just keep holding until you see your indicator and daytime running lights flash. Once you see the indicator lights, your daytime running lights flashing, you can go ahead and let go of that lock button. And if you have a vehicle with a gasoline engine, you're going to hear the vehicle start. If it's a hybrid model, it's going to be very quiet. So you just want to keep a lookout for those indicator lights. If you've remote started the vehicle, it's going to run for 10 minutes. When you go to enter the vehicle, it is going to stay on for you, and it's going to tell me that I need to apply the brake and push start. So it'll say not ready to drive, press brake pedal and push engine switch to start. So I'll apply the brake, push start, I'm ready to go. Now I can shift into drive. And remember, even though you can remote start from the key fob, most people prefer to use the remote start feature in the Lexus app because you don't have to be in close proximity to the vehicle. You just need to have a cell signal to the vehicle and a cell signal to your mobile phone. Make sure that your vehicle is locked, sign in to your app, and look for the remote start controls on the lower section of the app. And then you'll touch and hold where it says start. Just hold for about a second. It's going to connect to the vehicle and then it will remote start your TX. You'll also see notification right on your Lexus app letting you know that the vehicle has started and you'll see a countdown clock in the remote start button. The key fob also has an alarm button or a panic button. If you press and hold, it will sound the alarm on the vehicle. If you're using the alarm button to locate your vehicle in a parking lot, I suggest using the find last park location feature in your Lexus app. 
you'll see the last park location information at the top of the screen. Just click on it and you'll be able to get directions. Now let's come back to the power back door button. You can press and hold the power back door button to open. And close. And if you're walking away from the vehicle, make sure to then press the lock button so that you know your vehicle is secure. Of course, my favorite way to open the power back door is with the kick sensor. So just make sure you have your smart key on your person. It could be in a pocket or a bag, but you do have to have it with you because the kick sensor is also part of the smart access system. You're going to kick on the TX right in the middle unless you have a tow package. If your TX also has a tow package, you're going to kick just to the left. Without a tow package, just kick and step back right in the center of that bumper. Kick to open, kick to pause, and kick to close. So the new kick sensor system is a little more forgiving. If you waggle your foot a bit and you manage to step out of the way, it's probably still gonna open for you. But if you're not having much success with it, just make sure that you kick and step back. Don't hold your foot underneath and don't wave it side to side. If you hold your foot under the bumper too long or you don't step out of the way, the operation will cancel and you'll hear a double beep. One beep means it's seen your foot. The double beep means it's canceled. That's because it's actually looking for you to move your foot out of the way. It's really looking for a simple kick, straight forward and back. If the battery in the key fob is no longer operating, you can still open the vehicle. You'll just push on this dot on the side of the key where it says push, just push and you can access the mechanical key. This will allow you to unlock the driver's door. You can also use this key to lock your glove compartment, which is pretty cool, and twist flat. The metal key should be parallel to the ground. Everything is unlocked. Turn it perpendicular and it's locked. But let me show you how to access the key cylinder that's actually hidden behind the cover on the end of the driver's door handle. This will allow you to unlock and lock the vehicle. And then if the battery in the key fob is not working, you can still start the car. So I wanna show you how to do that. So the first step is to remove the mechanical key from your key fob housing, and then use any kind of gift card, credit card, you name it. We're going to just need to pop open this cover. So you'll just use the card and just give a little tilt to the left. And you may want to hold on to this just in case it does come right off. There are two little notched edges, but now you can see the key cylinder to unlock or lock the vehicle. Make sure that you hold on to this piece because you do want to cover this back up and this isn't tethered in any kind of way, so hold on tight to that. We're going to use the mechanical key. So you know the righty tidy lefty loosey. Well, this is lefty locky, righty unlocky. How about that for silly? So one turn to the right will unlock driver's door only. Second turn to the right will unlock all doors. If the key fob battery is no longer working, you can still start the car because of the microchip located in the fob. You just need to place it in front of the push button start and then apply the brake and push to start like normal. It's also possible to lock the vehicle with the engine running using the mechanical key. Here's how. Put the TX into park, exit the vehicle, be prepared to hear some beeps. So now we're not going to lock with the smart access system. It really doesn't like that. We need to manually override 
and lock with the mechanical key. I always like to turn the key to the left twice just to ensure that all doors are locked. Because we are not using the electronic part of the key, you may not see your auto folding mirrors fold in. So don't panic, but your vehicle is secure. Keep in mind that when you manually lock the vehicle, you also have to manually unlock the vehicle. The smart access system has been overridden. So just place the key in the key cylinder to the right once to unlock the driver's door only to the right a second time to unlock the entire TX. Your engine will still be running. Now, if the battery on the vehicle is not working, you'll still use this mechanical key to unlock the vehicle, but you will not be able to use the digital latch to open the door handle. You're going to unlock the door, then use this emergency mechanical latch just pull toward you and then open the door. When you're ready, you will need to contact roadside assistance. When you're ready to put everything back together, you want to replace the cover for the key cylinder. Remember that there are two pieces and insert this back piece first. Once that's in place, just snap down and you're all set and then make sure that you return the metal key to the key fob housing. To lock and unlock with the smart access system, just make sure that you have your key on your person. It can be in your pocket or a bag. And to lock, touch the indentation on any of the four doors. To unlock, put your hand in the driver's door handle. That's going to unlock the driver's door only. That is a customizable feature, but if you would like to leave that on as an additional safety feature, you can always just touch inside any of the passenger doors and it will unlock the entire vehicle for you. Another neat tip, if the TX is locked and you place your hand in the driver's door handle, just hold for two more seconds, and now I've unlocked the whole vehicle. Check that out one more time. Lock. I'm going to put my hand in the driver's door handle. The first beeps you hear are the system unlocking the driver's door only. But if I wait just two seconds more, it'll unlock the entire vehicle for me. Driver's door, all doors, nice and easy. The TX has a feature called rear seat reminder. Ultimately, it's a child safety feature, but it's also just a great reminder to have on in case you've placed items in the back seat before your drive. It just gives you an indication to check the rear seat before you exit the vehicle. Here's how it works. If I open a rear door, close that door, hop in, start up my TX and go for my drive. When I'm ready and I turn off the vehicle, I will see attention, check rear seat, show on my display. That means I should check what's in my back seat. However, if I don't do that and I lock my car without opening back doors, here's what happens. 9 beeps, lots of beeps. Just one more way to try to get your attention. Hey, you open those back doors before your drive and you didn't open them after your drive. If that's something that bothers you and you would like to turn that off, you'll turn it off in settings. Select the gear, scroll down to vehicle customize, scroll to utility, and then toggle rear seat reminder to off. However, if you leave rear seat reminder on and you open a back door, then go for your drive. When you turn it off, you'll have that check rear seat that shows on the multi information display. But if I open the back door, so I am checking my rear seat, making sure I have everything that I need. When I lock the vehicle, I don't get a million beeps, I just get one.
Some other great buttons to know about are the lock and unlock touch pads that are located here, just near the backup camera. The large touch pad will let you unlock and open the power back door. And then the small rubber touch pad will actually lock the entire vehicle. So once the door is closed, if you'd like to lock your TX without taking your key out or walking around to another door, you can simply use the small rubber touch pad. Just give a press, you'll hear the beeps letting you know that the vehicle is locked and you'll also see those side mirrors fold in if you have the auto folding mirror feature turned on. Once the power back door is open, you'll see two additional buttons on the right hand side. If you press the first button, it will close the door. And if you press again, it will stop it. You can also use this button to customize the opening height. Here's how you do that. Just press. Press again to stop it where you want it. And then you're going to push and hold. We're listening for four beeps. One, two, three, four. Now this new height is memorized. If I decide that I'd like to change this, I need to reset it first. So I'm going to push and hold again, but this time I need six beeps. Let's listen. That's four, keep holding. Last two. When you hear six beeps, it's totally reset to the highest possible position. On the TX, the right side button's default setting is to close right away and lock the vehicle just like on some of our previous models. But it can be customized to give you a 30 second standby period before it closes and locks the vehicle. And we call that the walk away, close and lock function because you actually have to walk away before the door will close. Take a look at how that works. That does exactly what it's called. You have to walk away after you push the button in order for it to close the door and lock the vehicle. Press the button. It's going to keep beeping. I have 30 seconds to gather my things and walk away. Inside the rear cargo area, if you're using a cargo net, you'll have D-ring anchor points on the lower corners. You'll go ahead and attach the clips at the bottom on both sides. Then unzip the pouch to take out the net and use the loops to connect the netting at the top on both sides. This handy little tab has two hooks. It usually is connected right at the front. And then the second hook can connect to the back cable. And it just creates two little pockets, just makes it a little easier to manage any goodies that you are holding in that cargo net. When you're ready to take it down, go ahead and unhook the cables from the top. Roll up the net, tuck it in the pouch, and zip it up. You can leave it attached to the D-rings if you'd like to have it handy, but if you want to store it and put it away underneath in the cargo area, make sure to go ahead and detach the cargo net pouch, and roll it neatly, and just tuck that down into the storage area on the right hand side. You may also see a 12 volt charging port at the rear of the TX. On the hybrid models, you'll see a 120 volt outlet. You do need to turn the power on for that outlet through settings in the main screen. Come to settings, vehicle customize, utility, and then you can turn the power outlet on or off. You can also use the shortcut ice cube tray to turn the power outlet on or off.
Inside the cargo area, you'll see a fabric sleeve cover that's for the second row removable cup holder setup. You can lift up on the cover and just have easy access to this lower storage area. But if you need to remove things, go ahead and either completely take out the cover or leave those tabs in place at the bottom and then use this support cable. So you'll just unhook it, unwind it, just place it somewhere around this edge and it'll stay in place for you and you can work hands-free. When you place the hook up top, just make sure to go over this foam trim piece so that you can take great care of it. When you're ready to remove the support hook, make sure to lift all the way up and over to protect that door seal material. Then you can put the cable back and be ready for next time. You even have a storage area for the tonneau shade right in the back. You'll also see the jack and taking a peek under the tonneau shade and you'll see additional tools for changing a tire and the key for the wheel lock kit. Accessing the spare tire takes a few more steps. You are going to want to completely remove the felted cargo cover. I also recommend removing the tonneau cover just so that you don't have any additional weight in this lower tray because it does need to come out. If you're just doing this to check it out, you can leave the tools and jack in place. But if you are changing a tire, go ahead and take your tools out now. If you're like me, the first time that you've looked back here, you probably wondered where the heck the handles are to remove this lower cargo tray. Well, guess what? They're kind of covered up. So take a look on the right hand side of the vehicle. You need to remove this right side cover first. Just lift up. You'll see even this vented section gets removed. Make sure to note that you're not going to remove the other side. The lower section nests underneath this fixed piece. At first, it might feel like this lower section doesn't want to come out. That's because there are clips all along this front edge. I also like to remove this piece just to make sure that you protect this rear side panel. So just press down on one side and lift up on the other and then you can remove that section. And then just work your way across. So of course right now I have my tools in, so it's a little bit heavier, but then you can lift up and access the spare. Of course, my favorite way to access the spare and get help with changing a tire is actually to press the SOS button and get some help from Lexus Roadside Assistance. Connecting to the emergency call center. To cancel, please press the button again. When you're ready to put this lower section back into place, lower the tray. I like to start with the clips on the more open side. So I'm going to slide this into place and then just snap until all the clips are in. And then you can restore your other pieces. There are two top clips and three bottom clips. It's a little bit of a puzzle piece, but you do want to line up the top clips the bottom clips and then start snapping things right back into place. When you put the vented section back, you'll see that there are tabs at the top and two tabs on either side. Just slide the top tabs into place and snap in at each end to secure the lower section. To remove the tonneau cover, just lift up on the side that's open because it does tuck in on the other side. So you'll need to just slide that out and you're good to go. To put the tonneau shade or the luggage cover into place, make sure that you fold the third row seats, remove the luggage cover from the rear storage cargo area, and then place it inside the vehicle with the handle facing the back because we are going to install this and then pull the shade into place. Let me show you how this works. You're probably going to need to climb aboard the TX one way or another. So either climb through the cargo area or access this by tumbling the second row seats forward. That's what I'm going to do. 
So I am inside the TX where the second row seats normally are, but I have moved them forward so that I can easily install this luggage cover. Now, a lot of people will either never use the third row or rarely use the third row. So maybe you'll put the luggage cover in place and just leave it there. Or maybe you're somebody who will rarely use the luggage cover. So you'll just leave it in the storage area. So I will say this is not difficult. It just requires some finagling. So let's check this out. Keep in mind that the luggage cover stores in its most compact way, so each end is spring-loaded. So what we want to do is we want to carefully bring the luggage cover in place kind of near where you're going to install it, and then carefully press the button to release. I say carefully because it is spring-loaded, so it pops out pretty quickly, but now we can install one end and then do the same thing on the other side. Come with me. If you're like me, crawling around inside the TX, be careful. Okay, remember that this spring loading does kind of pop out pretty fast. So I would hold tightly and don't let this open against windows or anything like that. And I'm going to push toward the left. So see how this can retract because the other side is already popped open. I'm going to push toward the left just to get a little more space and then slowly allow this to open up and slide in. Now let's open up our shade. For that, we gotta go outside and to the back of the vehicle. It's a good idea to have your seat belts tucked away in those seat belt holders, and then you'll need to reach in and grab the handle of the tonneau cover. For me, that means I actually have to climb aboard. Then I like to bring this down rather than up, just so that I protect the side surface bring it out and up into place and you'll see those two points on either side there's not a long track along the sides like you may have seen on some other lexus models but there you go there's your privacy shade tonneau shade luggage cover whatever you would like to call it nice and easy when you're ready to put it back just grab the handle pull toward you bring it down to clear those notches and slowly let it retract back into place. When it's time to put the entire tonneau shade back in the storage compartment, go ahead and retract. So just press to one side or the other. Once that snaps into place, you're gonna do the same thing on the other side, just making sure that it's in its most compact form and then just bring it down where it's easier to reach from the back of the vehicle. And then when you're ready to put it back, start with the recessed side and then you can tuck it back into place. If you see these buttons at the rear of your TX, you have power folding third row seats. Just use the L for left and the R for right, pushing down to fold the seats down and up to raise them back up and into place. After you hear the two beeps, you can go ahead and let go of the button. The headrest will fold. You'll hear the seat retract, and then it will fold flat. You'll hear two additional beeps once it's complete. There's no need to hold the button down. As long as you hear those two beeps, it will continue the operation for you. It is normal to hear those clicks as the seat moves into place. And you'll notice right now, the seat belt is kind of sticking behind the seat. Always a great idea if you don't have passengers in that third row to store the seat belts in the storage clip. And you can do the same thing on the other side. You can even operate the seat simultaneously. And if you have third row passengers, make sure to put headrests back into position. 
with power third row seats, you can also easily operate the third row without even having to open the rear door. You'll see buttons just inside the second row right side passenger door, just like the buttons located in the rear cargo area. They operate in the same way, R for right, L for left, push down to fold the seat down, and up to fold the seat up. If you stop the operation of the power seats, you're going to hear an alert. It will time out, but it is pretty loud, so just be aware of that. If you need to reverse the operation, just push the button to stop, you'll hear the seat alarm, and then push the button to operate the seat, either up or down. You can also control power-operated seats from the front main screen. Select the Vehicle Features icon, Seat Controls, and then you can either choose Fold All or Fold a specific seat. And we'll explore this more in part two. With a manually operated third row, you won't see buttons on the left-hand side of the rear cargo area. You'll see straps attached to each rear seat. The strap does have a small piece of Velcro so that you can secure it to the carpeted fabric behind the seat. And that just keeps it neat and kind of out of the way. If you have manually operated third row seats, to fold them down, just use the lever on the outside top edge of that seat. You don't need to fold the headrest down separately. It's going to do it for you. So just lift up on the lever and then start to rock that seat forward. The headrest will fold and then you can fold the seat down flat. When you're ready to put the seat back up, just reach in, grab the handle of the strap and then pull toward you. Lift the seat up and into place, and then lift the headrest up and into place. You'll do the same thing on both sides if you're using both third row seats for passengers. If you have third row passengers hopping in and you forgot to put the seats back up, not to worry. All they have to do is lift them up and into place. And then make sure the headrests are also put back up before their drive, and then remind them to grab the seatbelt from the seatbelt holder. The same lever you use to fold the seats flat can be used to recline the manually operated third row seats. Just lift up and press back. And you'll notice there is a large amount of recline. So depending on how much cargo room you need behind the third row, you'll want to adjust this third row seat position. You can do this on either seat. You can have the third row seat backs straight up, a small amount of recline, or fully reclined. There are three ways to have easy access to the third row. The easiest of all easy access is the one touch button up on the shoulder of each outboard second row seat. Give a press, it will slide and tilt forward automatically. Literally just push a button. Push the button, let it go, the seat flips forward and slides forward. Then when you're ready to bring it back, you can slide the seat bottom until it's all the way back, then raise the seat back so that second row passengers can hop in the vehicle. The second option is with the handle labeled number one on the lower sides of each outboard seat. Just lift up. It will also tilt forward and the seat will be able to freely slide forward or back. The third option is located behind the second row seat, so it's really easy for third row passengers to just lift this lever, tilt and slide the seat forward so they can hop out of the third row. It also lets you slide the seat forward and back if you needed to do that. As a best practice, if the seat is tilted and slid into the forward most position so that you have easy access to the third row, if you'd like the seat to be farther back on the seat track, make sure to slide the lower seat cushion back into place before you raise the seat back up. 
And of course, you can do the same thing on both sides. One touch, easy access. Really simple to get in and out of the third row. Slide it back, lift it up. If you forget to do that, you can always slide the seat forward or back with this lever. If you don't have third row cabin passengers, it's a great idea to secure the seat belt strap and clip so that they don't rattle while you drive. So just raise the clip up, slide the belt into the holder and the clip down into place. And then it's just going to keep that nice and flush and clear and out of the way for if you're folding the third row down. And of course, We've got that set up on both sides of the vehicle. Third cabin passengers on each side of the third row have USB-C charging ports and the housing for these third row USB-C charging ports makes a great handle when you're climbing aboard. Tablet or phone storage. Third row passengers can adjust their level of seat recline right at their fingertips. Just press to recline or raise the seat forward. So you might need to have the seats in their most upright position to maximize the cargo area behind the third row if you do have passengers in the second and third row. And a cup holder and additional cup holder or storage area. And you'll see this setup on both sides of the vehicle. A neat detail about the cup holder and storage cubby setup is that the removable cup holders that you'll see at the front of the vehicle and the optional setup if you have second row captain's chairs, these cup holders are removable. You'll just press the button that says unlock and then you can remove them and they are interchangeable. They fit in these side sections in the third row. So you can have more contained cup holder space on either side if that's the setup that you prefer. And if you really like this, you can actually buy additional or replacement cup holders if you need to from your Lexus dealership. And then snap them right back into place if you've relocated them from another spot in the TX. Looking down on the sides of the third row, you're going to see D-ring anchor points. These are used for different cargo netting configurations. If you have the seats folded flat and you're using a larger part of the rear cargo area. When you see this recessed section in the third row, so you'll see that on both sides, that is where your rear tonneau cover will click into place if you don't have your third row seats up for third row passengers. Notice that this looks like a dial to control the opening and closing of the vent. That's just a style choice. You can tilt the rear vents for climate control. You can also open and close and each side has their own light. Just press the button to turn it on and off. Down here below the third row seats, you have this fabric cover that is Velcroed to the bottom carpeted area and you have access underneath the third row to retrieve lost items and the occasional stray french fry. Now here come all my safety warnings. Yes, you can do this. It does not mean you should. There are a lot of moving parts. There are electronics. So if you do have to explore underneath your third row seat, be very careful, or please ask your Lexus service technician to see if they could help you out. When you're ready, you can put it back. If you lay it down flat, it's not going to line up well. You'll want to tuck this in just a little bit and then line it up and secure the Velcro. This actually is giving you some slack so that when you adjust the seat, this has room to kind of move with you. And yes, of course, you can go underneath both sides if you need to, 
And so I guess that means if you're in the front of the vehicle and you start hearing some Velcro, you can say, hey guys, please don't do that. Second row seats are all operated in the same way, whether you have the bench seat configuration or captain's chairs. They all have the same controls on the lower side section of each outboard seat. And you'll fold the seats flat in two steps. Lift lever number one, the seat will tilt and start to slide. Then lift lever number two and the seat will fold flat. And lift here to slide the seat forward or back. The second row has sunshades in each door. Just lift up on the tab and place it on the two hooks at the top of the window frame. When you're ready to put the sunshade back, lift up and toward you just to clear that little tab at the end of the hook and slowly retract it back down. Just don't let it drop because it will retract pretty fast and you want to make sure that you take great care of the screen material. Second row seats also have storage spots for the seat belts. They work just like they do on the third row. Raise the belt clip up, slide the belt into place, and lower the clip down. You can do the same on the other side. With the bench seat set up, you'll have a fold down center armrest with two cup holders. If your TX has captain's chairs, each seat will have its own individually adjusted armrest. Here's how that works. Just bring the armrest down and it will click into place. Then you can lift up and you'll have different increments at an angle. But then to come back to the lowest position, you do need to raise the armrest all the way back up, then come all the way back down and the cup holders will be located in the removable lower center console storage area. So when you're ready to put this entire container or even just the base into the storage bag, just retrieve the storage bag from the cargo area. It has a Velcro closure. There is not any kind of instruction booklet. Normally you might see some sort of instructions stamped or printed on the bag, but you don't. So if you're wondering what the heck this is for, you can use it for magic tricks or you can store the lower center cup holder console, which is really what it's designed for. So locate the catch that's at the front. So the back has a handle section, but the front has a little catch that you just press, lift up, slide it out, and then you can put the tray in the bag and store it wherever you would like. When you're ready to put it back in, you're going to slide these two tabs in toward the back first, then click down and into place. Phones and tablets can be stored in the center here and here. You can also store your phone right here. There are also air conditioning vents and personal lights located on each side of the second row. The buttons for the second row passengers to operate the rear cabin climate controls are located here. Less fan, more fan, the entire system off. You can turn it back on again very easily just by pressing the increase fan button. Adjust the airflow mode. Also just toggle to have it wherever you prefer. Face, face and feet, feet only, back to face only. Auto, auto will take over control of the fan speed and airflow mode or you can resume control just by pressing the buttons. Lower the temperature, increase the temperature, and you can always control the rear cabin climate from the front main screen. You may also have heated and or ventilated outboard seats for the second row. You'll have three levels of heat and three levels of cool or fan for the left side and right side passenger. 
And again, this will depend on the equipment on your TX. Coming down below the rear cabin climate controls, you will see two USB-C charging ports. Some models will also have a 120 volt outlet located below the rear charging ports in the second row. On hybrid models, below the back seats, you'll see vents. These vents are there to help cool the hybrid battery. So make sure that they don't get blocked, especially if you're on a long road trip with pillows and sleeping bags. It's also okay to vacuum these vents when you're cleaning your vehicle, but don't spray liquid directly into them. Very excited to point out that the third row seats also have the lower anchor points. For the latch system, normally you would see them down at the crease between the seat back and the seat bottom cushion. On the third row, you'll have an opening in the fabric on each side of both seats. So just be aware of that. So you'll locate the anchor point on each side and follow the instructions on your child safety seat. And of course, the top tethers are located on the seat backs of the third row and all second row seat backs. The, the top tethers for second row passengers, and that's where you pass the tether strap of a car seat or booster seat, and then you anchor it here. On the second row bench seat, you'll see lower anchor points for car seats on each outboard seat located between the seat back and the seat bottom cushion. If you have the captain's chairs on your TX, you'll also see latch or lower anchor points for child safety seats located between the seat back and seat bottom cushion for both second row seats. Child safety locks on the rear doors. When the child lock is in the down position, that means that rear cabin passengers are not able to open the door. You'll need to open the door from outside. Now let's take a look at the front cabin. If you haven't set up your driver profile yet, make sure to jump back to that section at the beginning of this video before making customizations. Looking at the buttons inside on the driver's door handle. You can power fold the mirrors in or out. If you have folded the mirrors in, I always like to use the auto feature to open the mirrors and turn back on the auto mode. That means your mirrors will fold in when you lock the vehicle. So you'll want to make sure that you see a little green light on the auto button. To adjust your mirrors, just choose L for left or R for right, and then use the touchpad to put them in the position that you prefer. If you have driver position memory on your vehicle, make sure to resave your driver position memory if you've adjusted the seat, steering wheel, or side mirrors. Another important detail about the left and right selectors for the side mirrors is that if you have one selected, so if you have a light on either L or R, when you put the vehicle in reverse, the mirrors will tilt down. That feature can be programmed. Apply the brake, place the TX in reverse, and then adjust the mirrors where you would like them to be when you are reversing. Press the P for park. The mirrors will adjust back up to your normal driving position. And the next time you put the TX in reverse, the mirrors will tilt down. If you don't want the mirrors to tilt and reverse, just deselect so that you don't have a light on for either L or R for the left or right mirror selectors. Unlock and lock. Notice that the lock button does have a small green light, but there's not a sound when you lock the vehicle. So you're not going to hear any kind of mechanism lock into place. It is very quiet. So that does take a little getting used to. You're going to just want to double check and make sure you've got that little green light on. Coming down for our window operation and you can lock out the passenger operation of windows. Just press again to deselect. If you don't have a light on this button, that means anyone can operate their own windows. And coming up, 
to the odometer and trip meter button. Just push and release, and you'll see the information change on the left-hand side of your display. Trip A, trip B. When you see a wrench, that indicates how many miles you have before your next oil change. Pressing one more time and you come back to your main odometer view. If you are on trip A or trip B, you can press and hold and it will zero out that trip. And you can increase and decrease the brightness of the lights on your instrument panel. When you look at this little item here, it looks like a button, but it actually doesn't do anything. It's letting you know these arrows adjust the lights, that's a teeny tiny light, of your gauge cluster. Increase, press up, decrease, press down. And you'll see that on your display. Arrowing down, 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 down. So you can get it pretty dark and nice and bright. And just below, you have the button to open your fuel door and open or close the power back door. If you press the power back door button and it does not operate the power back door, you might need to unlock the doors. And that message will appear on your multi-information display. Coming down just a bit for our optional driver position memory feature. Make the adjustment to your seat, steering wheel, and side mirrors, and even your head-up display if your vehicle has a head-up display. Then you'll press set, let it go, and your selected number. Keep in mind that your driver position is also linked to your driver profile, so make sure that you have your driver profile set up before you save your driver position memory. If you've saved driving positions before setting up your profile, just save them again once your profile is linked to the vehicle. And coming down, we have a nice little storage cubby. Coming down again for the manual release for the hood. And coming over for headlight operation. We are going to be able to operate the lights with the dial on the end and we want this indicator, this dash mark, to be on whatever we choose to select. Most people prefer to leave the headlights in the auto mode so that they can come on automatically when it begins to get dark and then turn off automatically when it's light. But you can manually turn your headlights on by twisting the selector all the way to the top. Come down one for daytime running lights or parking lights. Coming down again to auto and twist all the way to the bottom and you'll turn everything off. It says DRL off, meaning daytime running lights off, but in this case, everything is off. If you turn your headlights on manually, you will need to turn them all the way off or to auto so that the headlights will turn off after you've exited and locked the vehicle. This next selector is for fog lights. Just twist up and when your low beams are on, your fog light will also come on. When this selector is set to off, that means your fog lights will not come on. We also have automatic high beams on the TX. Just push a button on the end of the stock and you'll see a light come on for the automatic high beams. Your indicator for low beam headlights and automatic high beam headlights. If we have the fog light set to come on when the low beams come on, you'll see the fog light indicator here. If you are manually operating your high beams, if you pull the stock toward you, you will flash your high beams. You'll see the fog light indicator turn off and the high beam indicator turn on. If you press the entire headlamp stock forward, you'll see the high beams come on and stay on until you pull that stock back into your normal low beam or automatic position. Coming over to our windshield wiper operation. When you see this list of information on the left hand side, that indicates the mode that's active for the windshield wipers. It's all about adjusting the position of the wiper stock. So if we bring it up once, and drop it. 
that's missed. So that means it's just going to do one swipe or more times if you keep holding it up. And it's going to drop down to the off position. To turn on your automatic wipers, you're going to bring it down one more click. So we've gone from missed to off to auto. Once they're in auto, we can adjust the sensitivity of the automatic wipers with this dial. At the top, they're the most sensitive, so that's going to take less water to get them to operate. If you feel like they're operating too soon, just come down a little bit. All the way at the bottom is the least sensitive. The main thing to know is that you do not have to try to line up this dash mark with the word auto. This entire dial applies to the auto mode, so the first thing to do is put your windshield wipers in auto mode. If you're not quite sure if you're there, lift up, let it drop, and then come down one click from off to auto. Then select your sensitivity level. If you'd like to manually take over the front windshield wipers, you'll use that whole stock again and you'll come down one for low, all the way at the bottom of the position for high. Up to low, up to auto, all the way off, missed, dropping back to off. The end of the stock operates the rear wiper, on, intermittent, or off. Pull toward you to clean the front windshield and spray the headlamp washers, if you have headlamp washers on your TX, and push away to clean the back window and the rear backup camera. There are two different steering wheel possibilities on the TX. One for TXs with a head-up display and one without. You can also get a highly customizable 12.3 inch multi-information display with or without the head-up display. There are a lot of similarities between the different setups because the information on your instrument panel is going to be similar, if not identical, no matter which package you have on your TX. We're going to start off with the buttons on the right-hand side of the standard steering wheel. This is going to apply to TXs with either version of the multi-information display. In this next section, you're going to see footage with the standard multi-information display and the customizable multi-information display. But I will show you how to customize that optional display in just a few moments. But if this is what your steering wheel looks like, then Follow these next steps for how to use cruise control on your TX. The new cruise control system is on in standby mode. When you are in drive with your seatbelt on and you get to the speed that you'd like to cruise, just press the cruise button and the speed will be set at the speed that the vehicle is traveling at that time, as long as you're going over 19 miles an hour. You can then increase or decrease your speed. You can cancel by tapping the cancel button or the brake, and then you can resume with the resume button. If you'd like to change the following distance for adaptive cruise control, you'll do that here. Just press the button to adjust through four different lengths of following distance. You'll see the indicator change on your display. The following distance is like a buffer zone between you and the vehicle traveling in front of you. So make sure to try it out at one of the longer distances, just until you get comfortable with the system. The vehicle will begin to slow down for you, and then it will resume your cruising speed when the path ahead is clear. In order to use regular or speed only cruise control, you'll need to change the cruise control mode. With your seatbelt on, you need to be in drive right now, we have adaptive cruise selected, ready and waiting. In order to change from adaptive cruise to speed only cruise, we're going to use the mode button. So once you press that mode button, it will tell you what mode you're in currently. Right now we're in adaptive cruise. So just press it again and you'll see the icon change and the cruise mode change to cruise control. 
What that means is speed only. So you'll see the arrow pointing to a specific speed on a speedometer. That's what that icon is. And it's telling you to push the cruise button to activate. If you're not driving at least 19 miles per hour, it's not possible to activate speed only cruise. So just make sure that you are driving at least 19 miles an hour, and then you'll be able to press that cruise button and set your speed. When you are ready to change modes, just press the mode button and you'll be able to select from adaptive cruise mode where you set speed and following distance or press that mode button and change to standard cruise control mode setting speed only. If you're not sure which mode is active for cruise control, you can either press the mode button and it will tell you, or you can look at the icon in the icons that are lit in white on the bottom right hand side of the screen. Also in our driving assist information on the right hand side, we have our lane trace assist button. This is part of the lane monitoring system. The icon will show on screen when it is on and ready, it's going to be in white. If you press the button to turn it off, notice that lane trace assist is off, but lane departure alert is still on. So if you wanted to turn all lane monitoring off, you need to come to your shortcut menu, swipe over to driving assist and turn off or on lane departure alert. I recommend leaving those on. When you see the lane markers, if they show gray, that means the system is in standby mode. If they light up solid white, that means the system is seeing the lane markers. When it lights up in green, then you know the system is operating correction. If you see yellow or a yellow orange color flashing, that means you're getting a visual alert that you are veering out of the lane without using your blinker you're going to get a visual correction. You may feel a vibration in the steering wheel. You, you may hear an audible alert. You're also going to see a little steering wheel symbol. This little thing that looks like an alien with headphones on is actually an icon showing hands on a steering wheel. When it is green, that means the system is operating. If you use your blinker, you will override this system because the vehicle knows that you are intentionally choosing to leave the lane. Lane trace assist works when you have adaptive cruise control turned on, you're on the freeway, and it is able to trace off of the vehicle in front of you. This is really helpful if you're driving in an area where maybe the lane markers are not as clear or they've degraded over time. The audio buttons are located here. You can use the mode button to cycle you through different audio modes. You'll see that audio source change on your multi-information display. Depending on the screen you're viewing on the multi-information display, you'll either see your audio source information pop up and then fade out, or it will stay on screen if you've selected audio as your menu view. Just press the button to cycle from FM to AM, press again to Sirius XM, press again, and it can connect to audio from your phone. Just continue to toggle through all available music options, including two streaming music subscription services, Apple Music and Amazon Music, and cycle back. Just press and release the mode button until you have the source that you would like. Depending on the type of audio you're listening to, you can also pause or mute that audio by pushing and holding the mode button. You'll have an indication on screen letting you know if the audio has been paused or muted. Push and hold again to play. The arrows will allow you to move through your favorite stations that you've saved to your driver profile. Just use the arrows either left or right to move you up and down your favorites list. You'll see that information on your multi-information display and on your main screen. Coming over to the left-hand side of the standard steering wheel 
If you have the standard multi-information display, you're going to operate that with these arrow buttons and the OK button. In this layout, the multi-information display is on the left-hand side and you have a large center gauge cluster. And you have additional fuel information and oil information on the right-hand side of the display. The clock is at the top and the outside temperature. There is a lower section of driving assist and safety information. This is where a lot of different icons will appear and you'll even see your odometer and trip meter information. To make selections for the multi-information display, you can move left or right, and in some screens, you can move up or down. You'll actually see a slide bar with arrows, just indicating that there are additional screens. You do have to operate those arrows in order to see the slide bar. So if you are looking at the information menu, for example, and you don't operate the up and down arrows after a few seconds, that slide bar will just hide. But just use the up or down arrows and then it'll come right back. So you'll see it's just a big loop of information. Let's start with the information menu. We're going to use the down arrow button to move through the different screens. This is your first fuel economy screen. If you arrow down, you'll see drive information screen for average speed and elapsed time. Arrowing down again, and the third screen is probably the most popular. It has distance to empty, so your fuel range, how many miles are approximately left for this particular fill up. Arrowing down again to the eco indicator monitor, arrowing down, and TXs with turbocharged engines will have a turbo boost gauge. Arrowing down to the G-Force monitor, you may see this on your TX. Arrow down for the gear position screen. Keep in mind that not all screens are on all versions of the vehicle, so if you don't see a screen, just keep scrolling to see what's available on your vehicle. Arrowing down and the last screen in the list is actually a blank screen, just in case that's your preference. But you can arrow down again and you'll loop right back to the top. And if it were me, I would probably give a few more clicks on that down arrow and leave it on the distance to empty screen. And arrow to the right for the compass or navigation information. Arrowing to the right again for our audio screen. When your audio system is turned on, you're going to see more information here about whatever you have playing. And arrow to the right again for our driving support screen. This is where you'll see cruise control information and information about the lane monitoring system, all in a larger format view. Otherwise, that information will show in a smaller layout below and messages. This is where you would see service-related messages and even low fuel warnings would be held here. And arrow to the right again, and we just circle back to the information menu screens. If you receive a message that wants you to make a selection, you'll arrow up or down to make your choice, and then you'll press OK to accept, just like using a mouse on a computer, basically just selecting and pressing OK or clicking. Your go back button will take you back to a previous screen or clear messages that may appear on the display. Volume up and down for radio and phone. Our telephone button, you can answer or use the up and down arrows to decline. And our voice command button. Push and release is like saying, hey Lexus, Push and hold will access your phone's assistant, either Siri or Google, depending on what kind of phone you're using in the vehicle. If you have the head-up display, you'll have this steering wheel. So first and foremost, you have touch-sensitive arrow pads on the right and left side of the steering wheel. You also have buttons that have specific functions on each side of the steering wheel. 
and you have a menu or change button on each side of the steering wheel. So when you first touch the arrows, if it does not pull up the menu you're looking for, bring your thumb down to the menu or change button. Press down and then it will switch from the first menu in that item to the second. That's because there are two menus on each side. When you touch the arrow pads, you'll see whatever menu is active at the time light up. As you move your thumb across the buttons, it will highlight the item that you could then click on or select. So it's important to touch the arrow pad first and then press or click down to make a selection. A neat tip is that if you turn off your head up display, you'll see those same controls down in your multi-information display. So if it's easier to learn the system with the head-up display off, go ahead, leave the head-up display off, and then turn it on when you're ready to start using the head-up display. Turning the head-up display back on, you'll no longer see the items highlighting in the multi-information display, they have moved to the head-up display. So let's take a look at the left side of the steering wheel first. If I put my thumb on the menu or change button, so this little button that looks like it has two pieces of paper on it, if I press down and click, then it will change from one menu to the other. So we have our default screen, which is going to be our phone to answer a call, and then our voice command button. So you can use the wake words for your two assistants. You have your Lexus assistant, so you could say, hey Lexus, or you can push and release the voice command button. Cancel. You can also use the voice command button to wake up your phone's assistant. Right now I have an iPhone connected, so I could say, hey Siri, how's the weather? It's currently partly cloudy and 79 degrees. Or I can press and hold the voice command button. How's the weather? It's currently partly cloudy. Then I don't even have to use the wake phrase. Also on the left hand side of the steering wheel, you can use the left and right arrows to move through your radio favorites or to seek up and down the dial. Volume control, up or down for phone and audio. Just touch and then press. Then you can turn the volume up or down. Keep in mind that you do need to have some sort of audio actually playing. Volume up, volume down. Then if we come down to our menu or change button where it says more, just press that button and it will switch views or menus. When I switch on the left side, I'm going to now have more audio controls. In fact, if my audio system is turned off, which right now it is, I can see that message in the head up display. It would also say enable audio on my main screen. So rather than reaching to turn on the audio system by pressing the power and volume button or clicking on enable audio on screen, all I have to do is have the audio menu open on the left hand side and then push the audio power button here and now my audio system is back on. Also on the left hand side audio menu we can change modes. We can toggle through our audio sources. When you press the mode button, it will toggle you through all audio sources, FM, AM, Sirius XM, and just keep pressing and it'll bring you through everything. So if you have your phone connected, you'll have your phone's music content. And then two different streaming services are available. They do require subscriptions to those services, Apple Music or Amazon Music. They also require a subscription for streaming music through the Lexus app. Another really neat thing about the mode button is you can use it to 
mute or pause certain audio. So right now we have a Sirius XM station playing that I'm not going to turn the sound on for <laughs> because I don't have the rights to it. So instead of pushing and releasing the mode button and changing from one audio source to another, I am going to push and hold the mode button and I'm going to mute or pause my audio, which I think is so cool. So then you would just push and hold again and then you would resume the audio play. So if the content is muted, you'll see that drop down notification on your main screen. So for content that is not live, like satellite radio, you are able to pause and you'll see the playhead change from a playhead symbol to a pause symbol, depending on your selection. Now let's take a look at the buttons on the right hand side of the steering wheel. So it's very similar to what we've got on the left hand side. We have our touchpad, we have our change button or pressing for more. So I'm just going to touch and then press. On the right hand side, our default menu view is going to be for driving assist, very specifically cruise control. The most important thing to know about cruise control is that unless you are in drive with your seatbelt on, you can't actually do much with it. It's going to tell you cruise control unavailable, shift to drive. If you apply the brake, have the TX in drive, but you don't have your seatbelt on, when you press the cruise control button, you're going to get this message. It says cruise control unavailable, see owner's manual. So make sure you have your seatbelt on, the vehicle in drive, then get up to the speed that you would like to cruise and press the button to set your speed. A really cool thing about the new cruise control system is that basically it's kind of ready and waiting for you. It is in a standby mode. All you have to do is get up to the speed that you would like to cruise and then push the cruise button. This is going to set your speed as long as you're going over 19 miles an hour. So if you are not yet going 19 miles an hour, like I'm not, I'm actually sitting here with my foot on the brake for you, it's going to say 19. That's because it's not going to actually engage your adaptive cruise control until you're going at least 19 miles per hour. If I now touch the arrow pad on the right hand side, I have more controls for cruise control. I can set my following distance by pressing the left arrow. I have four different levels of following distance. This is like a buffer zone between you and the vehicle traveling in front of you. So I'm just going to press from four to three to two to one. These are not exact car lengths. You want to think of this as the longest possible buffer zone, a little bit closer, a medium range buffer zone, and then the closest buffer zone. So how close do you want to get to the vehicle that you're following before the system begins to slow you down? Most people prefer starting out at the third level, sometimes level two if you're already accustomed to an adaptive cruise control system. Just give it a try, and I always recommend erring on the side of caution, and then learn what the system is like before you start making closer customizations. Notice that with the arrows on the right hand side, once you've activated cruise, you can cancel by pressing the right arrow or tapping on the brake. Then you can resume by pressing the up arrow. Once we are cruising where it says resume, it will have a plus symbol. So you can increase by pressing the up arrow and then you could decrease your speed by pressing the down arrow. If you would like to change from adaptive cruise to standard or speed only cruise, you need to turn off the adaptive cruise, come over to mode, press the mode button, and you'll be changing from adaptive cruise to 
cruise control, which is speed only. So I'm just pressing that down arrow for the mode button with cruise control turned off. If I have regular cruise or speed only selected, the symbol for the cruise control feature is actually going to change. So the symbol on the right hand side right now is just a speedometer with an arrow. If I change modes back to adaptive cruise, we're going to see a speedometer with a vehicle and an arrow because we are setting following distance as well as speed. Another important piece of information, if you are learning about this system and you have regular cruise, so speed only cruise selected, and you press the button to activate your cruise mode, it's not gonna let you do it. You have to be driving and going over 19 miles an hour for your speed only cruise control to be selected. Also on the steering wheel on the right hand side is your lane trace assist feature. So when you touch lane trace assist, it's going to pop up a message letting you know whether or not it is on or off, just toggle to turn lane trace assist on or off. To use lane trace assist, the actual tracing feature, you must have cruise control on and set. Once cruise is on and set, you are able to allow the system to trace off of the vehicle in front of you. So if you're in heavier traffic or the system is having trouble identifying the lane markers on the freeway, the vehicle is able to trace off of the vehicle that you are following. So it's just an additional feature for lane monitoring. Go ahead and press the more or menu button on the right hand side of the steering wheel. In the display section, you can raise or lower your head up display. This is a great way to do it because you're sitting there looking right at it. So if you turn off your head up display, just know that when you access the display screen menu, you will not see the raise or lower for the head up display because you have turned it off. So if you want to raise or lower the head up display, make sure it's turned on, then make sure that you are on the display menu items, up arrow to raise it and down arrow to lower. Let's go through our display settings. Notice it says DISP to the left and the right. When you touch the left or right arrow on the display menu, it is going to say meter display, and then it will tell you which display number you're on, either one, pressing the right arrow to two, pressing the right arrow again for three, pressing the right arrow and we are back to one. So there are three customizable main screens. I'm going to continue to arrow to the right. And if you have messages available, they could be service-related messages or things like this low fuel warning. You'll see a summary of those messages here. It's really more of a recap because these messages also appear as pop-ups and some have additional icons on screen like the low fuel icon here. The messages screen is actually not even visible at all times. So if you arrow left or right and you see your three main screens, and you arrow again and you don't see the messages screen, don't worry, it just means you don't have any messages at that time. Now let's explore the customizable multi-information display. I'm going to show you how to operate it with the standard version of the steering wheel and the head up version of the steering wheel. We'll take a quick look at some important customizations for the appearance of the display and then I'll show you step-by-step step how to make selections for the content that you can see on each of the three available screens. But first, let's cover some basics. I want to make sure that you know that the style or layout that you see also changes with the drive mode you select 
and the meter type that you select. So some of my footage will show meter type one, some will show meter type two, but usually I am in the normal drive mode. But let me just give you a little bit of an idea of how this all works. Select the gear to come to settings. Scroll down to vehicle customize and then select meter. This is our meter settings menu. We're gonna go into detail on all of this in part two, but I want you to know what this does for your customizable multi-information display. While we're talking about that in part one, meter type, select to open that, and we have three different options. Meter type one with a large singular central gauge. Meter type two with two circular gauges and meter type three, no circular gauges, just a really more minimalistic layout. Coming back to meter type one, just push okay after you've made your selection. Open the shortcut menu, our little ice cube tray, scroll over to drive mode, when you select the Eco Drive mode, you'll have the blue theme on your display. When you select the Sport Drive mode, you'll have a red theme. Coming back to normal, and it's more of that monochromatic appearance. To customize pages on the multi-information display, you need to do that one page at a time. With the standard steering wheel, you'll use these buttons on the left side of the steering wheel for selection and customization. You will use the left and right arrows to select the page that you'd like to customize. We'll use the right arrow to click through screen number one, number two, and number three. Let's arrow over again and it tells you hold OK to customize. So we'll press and hold the OK button. And now we've activated the customization mode. Then use the arrow pad to move through the items that are available to show on that page. Then you are going to exit customization by pushing the U-turn or go back button. So we'll just press that. Then you can use the left or right arrows to move to your next page that you'd like to view or customize. And for the head up display steering wheel controls, you're going to operate your customized multi-information display with the right side buttons. When you touch the left or right arrow on the display menu, it is going to say meter display, and then it will tell you which display number you're on. Just arrow to the page that you want to customize, and then push and hold the arrow button to enter customization mode. Then use the up or down, and left or right arrows to customize any of the content that you would like to view on that page. Arrow to the left and choose an item for our left screen. Arrow to the right, arrow to the right again, and we'll choose an item for our right screen. But keep in mind, this is only screen number one. So let's press the more button to exit customization then arrow left or right to go to the next page that you'd like to customize. Make all of your customizations for page number two, then push the menu or more button to exit customization, and you get the picture. Just remember that you need to select a page, customize the page, and then exit customization in order to move to another page. And then you can customize that. On all three screens, there are three different zones or sections that you can customize. The center section on each page has all of the same list of available items to view, no matter which page you're on. And the left and right screens all have the same items to choose from. It's going to default you to that center view here are the options that you have for the center view. You can choose a blank center section, arrow down. You have driving support information for cruise control, lane monitoring, etc. 
arrowing down. Map one, when you have the Lexus Drive Connect navigation activated, you'll not only see the maps on your main display, but you'll have the option of two different map views in your customizable multi-information display. Coming down to select map two, and it's a slightly wider map view. If you activate a route with a navigation app through Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, that information is not going to carry over to the customizable display on your multi-information display. So if you have selected either map one or map two, and you put in a route through Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, this screen might appear blank and you'll have additional navigation information such as your next turn appear in other places on your display or in the head up display. But when you end the route, your Lexus navigation will reappear on the multi-information display if that's your selection. Apple Maps through CarPlay, Lexus Maps in the multi-information display, arrowing down for a blank screen. It's pretty common for the customizable display to have a blank screen as the default central view. So go ahead and make that customization. Once you've made your selection, arrow to the left, and then you can change what shows up on the left side of the multi-information display. The list that you see as you move up or down is going to be identical on the right-hand side. So choose something that you would like on the left-hand side, then arrow over and just know you have the exact same list available on the right-hand side. So pick something else. So you can loop through fuel economy, arrowing down, EV ratio, so this is only on hybrid models that you're going to see the EV ratio, arrowing down again to a small driving support screen. So if you already have driving support selected in the center, you probably wouldn't want to have driving support selected here when you have so many other options to choose from. Arrowing down again, we could have navigation information on one side, arrowing down again for audio, arrowing down, a drive information screen, arrowing down, our energy monitor screen for hybrid models, arrowing down again for sports gauges, arrowing down to the boost gauge, arrowing down for the G-Force monitor, and arrowing down to our gear position. And if we arrow down again, we'll be back to the top of our menu selection. That's actually a blank screen option. So let's arrow down one more time and we'll be right back where we started, which is our fuel economy screen. Then you are going to exit customization using the more button if you have a head up display on your vehicle or the go back button for the standard steering wheel. So we'll just press that. And now what we need to do is we need to decide, do we want to customize an additional screen? So all of your selection items are the same. So whatever you chose for the central display on screen one, you can decide, do you want it to be the same? And you just wanna change up what you have on the left or the right from your available items, completely up to you. Just move through your list up or down, nice and simple. Or do you want to have three completely different setups? All things are possible. And if this seems completely ridiculous and overwhelming to you, skip it and just go with the default settings until you decide that you wanna play around with something like this. Pressing the button to exit customization. You'll notice paddle shifters on each side of the steering wheel you do need to be in the manual mode to use paddle shifters. Make sure you're in drive and then pull the gear shift straight back. You'll see the M light up for manual mode. You can upshift on the right and downshift on the left. Pulling straight back to manual mode, upshift on the right, 
downshift on the left. After you've finished using manual mode, when you're ready to go back to automatic drive, you don't need to apply the brake or come to a stop. You can just shift back into drive. Coming back to automatic drive. Coming up. There are two different rear view mirror possibilities on the TX. The standard optical rear view mirror with three home link buttons located below and on the left hand side for garage door or gate operation and the optional digital rear view mirror. The digital rear view mirror also has an optical mirror built in. When the optical mirror is in use, you're going to see the headrests of the back seats. In order to change to digital view, you'll use this toggle and just toggle forward. When the digital mirror is on, it's using a camera that's mounted against the glass of the back window and you have an unobstructed view so you don't have to worry about rear cabin passengers. And to go back to optical, just toggle forward. This mirror housing is pretty heavy. I recommend adjusting the optical mirror first. Once you've adjusted the optical mirror, then toggle forward for the digital view and use the digital rear view mirror settings on the right hand side. This button is your menu selector button. Just press it and all of the settings become available. Press again to toggle through each different item. Once you've chosen a setting, you can use the left or right arrows to make an adjustment. So we're on brightness. You can raise or lower the view from the lens, pressing the menu button again. You can adjust the view from left to right. So just moving it side to side. And you can tilt the camera view. So it just tilts it a little bit to the right or left. Pressing our menu button again to zoom, use the right button to zoom in, and the left arrow to zoom out. Pressing again, and you can turn off or on the auto dimming feature. Press the menu button again, and you can turn off or on an anti-glare feature. When the anti-glare feature is on, you're going to see that star icon in the top left hand corner of the digital mirror. Pressing that menu button again and you can follow home link setup instructions right on screen. Pressing the menu button one last time, you can even change your language selection for the instructions on the digital rear view mirror. If you don't operate those settings buttons for a few seconds, they will time out for you. Another icon to be aware of is the camera icon in the top right hand corner of the screen. Just an additional reminder that the camera view is active. Below the mirror on the left hand side are your three home link buttons for garage door or gate operation. When you're ready to go back to the optical view, just toggle forward. Keep in mind that when you are using the digital view, it is common for the mirror housing to feel a bit warm to the touch. Coming up to the buttons and controls on the ceiling, depending on the model and package that you have, you may have no moonroof or the panorama glass roof. Both versions have a small glasses holder individual dome lights on each side. Just press to turn them on or off. A button to turn all of the dome lights on and off. And make sure door mode is turned on so that the dome lights will come on when the doors are open. This needs to be flush if you would like the lights to turn on when the doors are open. If the door mode is not activated, this button will stick out slightly. It's a very slight difference. But if your dome lights are not coming on when you open a door, just press that button. 
And right in the middle, most importantly, is your SOS button for Safety Connect. You do have a complimentary 10-year trial for Safety Connect with your Lexus Interface Connected Services subscriptions. The panorama glass roof adds additional buttons to open and close the shade and operate the moonroof. Operate the shade for the panorama glass roof. Press the front of the button to close the shade and the back of the button to open it. Just think of the direction that you would like the shade to go and press the button going in that direction. Tilt the moonroof. And open or close the moonroof. And to close it, press the front button. You'll need to press one more time to fully close. The first press of the front button will bring the glass forward, but it does leave the back part of it lifted open. So if you would like to fully close the moonroof, you will need to press that button a second time. And let's come all the way down below our air conditioning vents. You'll see the buttons to operate advanced park and the 360 view monitor feature that we'll go over in part two of this series, two USB-C ports for charging, and one USB-C port for charging and data. That means you could plug in an iPhone or an Android phone for tethered Apple CarPlay or Android Auto, if you prefer. Coming down to the wireless charging tray, when the vehicle is on, the charging tray is on. So you'll see that green light. If you have a compatible phone and your case is not too thick, when you place your phone on the charger, you'll see a message on the top of your screen and you'll see the charging icon light up in blue. When it's blue, it's charging. When it's gray, it's not. It is normal for the charging to turn off and on just to protect the battery on your cell phone, just to try to keep it from overheating. Below the charging tray, you'll see a small storage area, including a 12 volt accessory charger. Just push to close that tray. Taking a look along the center console, you have two removable cup holders. Just press the button that says unlock and you can take out each one of the cup holder inserts and just have a much larger storage area if that's your preference. When you're ready, just pop them right back into place. They're not magnetic. They do need to snap into place. So I find that if you put the solid edge in first and then snap that down, they line up really nicely. Let's take a look at the shifter setup. You may even have a little cheat sheet attached to the gear shift. Apply the brake, push P for park. For all other shift positions, we're going to move to the left first. Apply the brake, left and up or forward and you're in reverse, left and back or down and you're in drive, left and hold, and you are in neutral. Handy for going through a car wash. After you've made it through that car wash, when you're ready to get back into drive, just apply the brake, left and back, let it go, and you're in drive. Just remember that you don't have to hold the shifter. So when you're wanting to go to reverse, you don't have to leave it there. Just let it go and it goes back to that standby position. Press P for park and you're all set. The layout for the buttons below the gear shift will vary depending on the model and equipment on your vehicle. But all TX models will have brake hold, the automatic parking brake, 
and traction control, which you can turn off or leave on. The brake hold feature will hold your foot brake for you. You must have your seatbelt on, shift into drive. Then you can press hold. You'll see hold light up in green, letting you know that the feature is turned on and hold in gold, letting you know that it's going to hold your foot brake for you. That means I can remove my foot from the brake and we're still not going anywhere. When I'm ready to drive, I just need to apply the accelerator. I'll be driving again, apply the brake. When I see hold in gold and I can even see my brake light indicators, which is really cool. So hold in gold, and that means I can remove my foot from the brake. So this might be something that you would like to use if maybe you're stuck at a train for a little while and you just don't feel like pressing down on the brake the whole time. It will time out eventually and let you know that you need to apply the foot brake or it will put the vehicle in park. When the feature is on, it will light up the icon in green. When it's ready to hold the foot brake for you, it will say hold in gold. When you're ready to turn the feature off, just press the button again and you'll see the icon or icons turn off. All TXs also have an automatic emergency or parking brake right here. Normally when you put the vehicle in park, you'll see the word park on your display in red, letting you know that the emergency parking brake has been applied. When you shift into gear, that automatic parking brake or emergency parking brake will be disengaged. Press P for park and the parking brake is applied. If you would like to manually operate the parking brake, make sure to press on the brake. Then you can push down on the parking brake button to turn off the parking brake. Push down and hold and that will disable the automatic function. With your foot on the brake, if you lift up on the button, it will apply the parking brake. You'll actually feel the brake pedal depress underneath your foot. Lift up and hold. And then the auto feature has been turned back on, that shift interlock function. That just means when you shift, from gear into park, it is going to automatically operate the parking brake for you. You'll also see the traction control button on all TX models. Just press to turn traction control off if you need your wheels to spin more based on the terrain that you're driving on. But under most day-to-day -day driving conditions, we want traction control to remain on. So if you press the button and it says traction control turned off, press again to turn it back on. The all gas TX350 and TX350 all wheel drive will have an auto engine start stop button located here. When the feature is turned on and you're in gear, and you come to a complete stop. The engine may cycle off if it can. If it's not able to cycle off, you might see a message on the screen letting you know to press the brake more or that it's needed for climate control. Keep in mind that the engine is only going to shut off if it can and still operate all of the accessories that you have running on the vehicle, including and most importantly, your climate control system. If you don't like that, just press the button to disable it. Pressing this button, so it's an A with a circular arrow and the word off. When you've disabled the auto start stop, you will see it light up in orange on the left-hand side. You do have to disable it every drive cycle. So that means when you turn the vehicle on, if you do not want the auto start stop to operate, you do need to press this button. If your vehicle is an all wheel drive TX, you will see the trail mode button that looks kind of like a vehicle out on the trail. Some people think it looks like a Christmas tree. When you press that, 
the trail mode icon will light up in green. Trail mode is just for light off-roading, so it's that same icon. It may appear in a slightly different place depending on the type of multi-information display that you have, but when it's on, you should see the trail mode icon in green somewhere on your instrument panel. Just press again to turn off the trail mode feature. TXs with all-wheel drive system will also have downhill assist control. Shift into gear, drive, or even reverse, and you can turn on downhill assist control. If you're not in gear and you do try to turn the feature on, it's going to come on, but it's not going to be accessible when you are in part. The downhill assist control icon will just flash repeatedly because it can only be used when the vehicle is in gear. So when you are in gear and you press the downhill assist control button, you'll turn the feature on and see the icon light up in green. When you press it again, you'll turn the feature off. The plug-in hybrid will have two different hybrid powertrain buttons here. It is very difficult for me to get a plug-in hybrid to film in right now, but I do have some details for you about these buttons from a different Lexus plug-in hybrid that I was able to film. To allow the vehicle to automatically change from EV to HV mode, just press the button to make sure you see Auto EV HV if you'd like to take over and select a mode, use the HVEV and hold charge button, push and release to toggle through the selection of either hybrid vehicle mode or electric vehicle mode. Keep in mind that the electric vehicle mode might be limited depending on the charge level of your hybrid battery. If you need to support the battery with additional charge, go ahead and push and hold the hold charge button. You'll see the charge mode icon appear on screen and you'll hear and feel the gasoline engine turn on to provide additional charge for your hybrid battery. The front armrest opens in two separate sections nice large storage area. There aren't any charging ports or anything inside. Just close it up when you're ready. Well, thank you so much for stopping by the Lexus Virtual Classroom today for part one in our Lexus TX Deep Dive series. You should see a link below for part two. Don't forget to like and subscribe and click the bell so that you can be notified when I release technology videos, our Tech Tip Tuesday series that will help you make the most of your Lexus. Thanks again for stopping by. We'll see you next time. So should we call it the Lexus Texas or the Texas Lexus. I'm going for that. The new Texas Lexus, the Lexus TX. We'll slide this into that spot and it may go flying off. You will lock the vehicle. So turn to the left. Now our vehicle is locked. Whoops, now it's unlocked. Hold on, hold please. And I wanna give you a quick disclaimer. It is not easy to film the head up display. So here's what we've got going on. I have a book laying down on the windshield and that's allowing the head up display to have a solid background. And I'm filming the head up display with a different phone mounted to the windshield. Obviously I will not be driving like that. There you have it, behind the scenes. And a huge shout out to all of my friends in the Lexus Inner Circle. Thank you so much for all of your support.